No, you can serve. That's all right. No, you can serve. No, no, no you go first. No, you go first. <laughs> go. And I'll turn gentlemen. Uh, I'm Ian Hurley. This is Ron Kaputska. How you doing? Good. We represent uh, 101st Airborne Sea Company, 502nd, um, on D-Day and D the days after D-Day. This is some of the gear that the paratroopers would have jumped into Normandy with. We don't have a parachute with us or anything like that. This is just regular field gear. Web gear that a normal paratrooper would carry. They would have had a, a musette bag or a backpack, a couple of things in there, food for three days, map case, would have been an officer or a sergeant. And then they would have carried one of these two rifles. This is the M1 rifle and this is the M1 carbine. This is a 30 caliber battle round. This is a smaller round. And then they would have been issued one of two pistols. This is a Colt 45, which is a 45 ACP. And this is a 38 Special, which would have been carried either in a shoulder holster up here or in a holster on the web gear like this. Gotcha. That's beautiful stuff. Thank you. And this is a 30 caliber machine gun. That would have been a four-man crew. One man carries the gun, one man carries the tripod, and then there'd be two ammo bearers. Wow. And that shoots about 600 rounds a minute. And that shoots the same round as the M1 rifle. Is that one really? Oh. So the am ammunition was interchangeable. Hey, it's amazing how fast it goes from the Civil War, right? Like the equipment. Yeah, Civil War had muskets and you know yeah. just starting to get into and then cartridges, and then you move into the, in World War II that it would, be, would have been a fully automatic weapon. Wow. And then now we have even more advanced ammo and no. weapons and so on. Go lay down in front of it. Thank you. 